All right, so yeah, welcome. I'm glad some of you guys found the, um, the announcement about the help session and joined here. Uh, hopefully mo more people will kind of discover that as the, the class goes. So, um, so this is an online class, but I am probably gonna try and hold these help sessions. I don't, don't know if I'll do it every Monday and Wednesday, like I said. Uh, it'll depend on how many people are joining and stuff like that, right? Uh, but I probably am going to keep these just as Zoom sessions uh, since this is a, 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 um, officially an online web-based course. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I run these more kind of like uh, as, as kind of an office hour. So so I already have somebody asking questions, and that's fine. Um, um, I usually ask those people to kind of stick around, and so that I can either set up an individual thing with them, or to send me an email, and we can set up a. a a separate appointment uh, before or after um, to, to have more one-on-one -on -one kind of session. So, but yeah, the general idea on these, if I run these, is um, just more as a question and answer session. So, if you've looked at the the, the course website, um, I mean, there are videos um, uh, for most of the content of the course, so you can find that. Um, if you click on to the, the comment uh, in there, you'll have the videos, right? Um, oh, and by the way, um, there is an official um, playlist on YouTube of all the videos. So if you go to the additional resources, you should find it. Um, and um, um, of course, you can get to the videos, you know, from, from my Leo online. Uh, in here, or you can look at the videos, but but um, uh, I just point out this playlist because you got all of them together. Plus, I'll also be putting these help sessions uh, that I record on here as well. Uh, you'll find that there's help sessions from um, from the fall semester, so you're probably not interested in watching those. But I'll put uh, any new help sessions here after the uh, the, the the videos uh, for the class, so after the unit five videos. Um, um, so yeah, th I mean this this is meant to be a kind of general help session. So anytime when I'm talking on these, if you have questions, you know, feel free to uh, unmute your mic, let me know, or use the the, the group the, the the chat function to type in question that type of thing. So. Um, I was probably going to try and work through showing you guys these getting started steps um, and a couple of things uh, just to have something to talk about. But, but yeah, again, while I'm doing these things, you know, feel free to ask questions or stuff, you know, about the course or the assignments or the structure of the course or that type of thing. So um, I messed up my dev box here. Um, And I'm just going to live with it. So hopefully you can see my desktop here. Uh, it's, um, I um, um, got my resolution a little bit off here. Um, so this first week, um, if I can go back to my browser here, um, you know, you should get started reading our textbook, but you also should get started setting up the uh, development environment for the class here. So I have instructions, uh, these getting started instructions for doing that, for getting your development environment setting up. There are videos of me doing this, the same thing that I'm gonna try and do here um, on this help session as well. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do it using a Windows system, but there's a video using um, a Mac system. So if you're a Mac OS person, um, you probably won't wanna watch that video instead of the Windows specific one. You should be able to get set up on Windows or Mac, right? So basically, we've got five units in this class. Uh, every three weeks, we, we cover one of the units. So every, every three weeks covers two chapters of our textbook. So you should be reading chapter one and two these first three weeks. And then every unit, every three week unit, we have a, a written assignment, a programming assignment, and a, a test over the unit. So, so basically, the written assignment will be due like on Wednesday of the second week. The program assignment will be due on the Wednesday of the third week, and the test is then on the, the Friday uh, by the end of the, the, the third week for each unit. So. Um, 
so anyway, that, that was just a little bit about kind of the course structure. Let me, let me go back to the, uh, the, the getting set up here. Um, so for the program assignments, which are 25% are of the, the class grade, 5% uh, for each of the five assignments, there'll be five assignments, um, you'll need to get um, this development box, uh, this, this development environment set up. So these instructions are, are um, all here in writing, or you can watch the video. Um, uh, you can get the same instructions from the, the repository for the, the course. So um, actually, I'm going to open this up in my other uh, in the other place here, but uh, the course repository I've got on Bitbucket. This is a Git repository. Um, you know, um, it's my uh, um, account, the harder, um, and the name of the repository is CSCI 430 OS Sims here. So, uh, the same instructions that you need to do to get your development environment set up are, are here on the getting started. Um, or in the, the MyLeo online. So these should be the same instructions here. Well, like I said, I'm going to try and go through these here um, um, uh, in the next hour, you know, so. Um, So let me open up that same repository. On Bitbucket, so we can follow the instructions from there. So, um, so again, you know, just uh, type out any questions if you have them while we're doing stuff or, um, or um, shout them out. So, to get the development environment set up, you have to download and install three pieces of software. Uh, Git, G-I-T, which is a revision control system for uh, managing software projects. Um, uh, VirtualBox, so the dev box that, that you need for projects for this class is actually a Linux development system uh, that we install inside of a virtual uh, box here. And Vagrant, which is a, 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 a another tool for virtualization here that I'll talk more about. So I've already downloaded these, but um, you know, again, I've got links to all these. So, you know, like um, to download Git, uh, you would click on this link here, um, you know, and, and you would download the Windows or, you know, you'll get a different page if you're a Mac OS. If, if you're a Mac person, uh, you probably already have Git installed, so you don't have to install Git, you just have to install the other two. But you can, you can check that. I've got some discussion about checking that. But for Windows, you'll definitely have to install Git. I've already downloaded all these. Um, so um, let's show installing Git here. So I've already got all these in my downloads. So all these are standard Windows installers if you're a Windows person, um, or they're standard Mac OS package installers uh, for the virtual box and Vagrant if you're a, a Mac OS person. So but for like a Windows installer, if you double click on it, it'll start the installer. So for Git, you basically, for all of these, you basically just can accept all of the, um, the defaults and settings that are specified in the installer. Um, so, you know, install, just allow it to install in the default location, program files, Git. Um, so you won't get this message because I had Git installed before. Um, I'm just going to inst install it again over. Um, let it have those components. There's only one thing that you should be careful of on, on the Git settings here. Um, when it talks about the line ending conventions, uh, I think it'll work with the default that it has set. Check out in Windows, but commit. No, actually, no, I'm wrong. So it won't work if you leave it where uh, it checks out using Windows style because basically the, the development environment that you guys are using for this class is a Linux environment. So if you leave it like this, it'll check it out using Windows character return line feeds, but when you get into the, to the, um, the, the, the virtual environment, uh, that'll cause problems. So this is, you definitely wanna change this to check out as is. It'll probably work for either of those, but, but check out as is and, and commit using Unix style line ending is the safest, okay? So you should, should do that. That should be the only thing that you need to um, to make certain is correct. Um, 
If you accept those, this is a standard installer, so it'll go through and install all the files. So, um, so after that installs, uh, I'm going to show you kind of using these tools from a command line. So if you've never done this before, uh, this is how you do it from a Windows system. So you have to be able to get a DOS command prompt um, or a command prompt uh, in order to do some of these steps that I talk about here in the getting started. So this is just confirming that, um, Go away. There we go. Uh, this is just confirming that Git was installed correctly. Um, so yeah, we're we're finished with the uh, the Git installation now. Let's 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 check that it installed correctly here. So to do that, you need a what's known as a command prompt. If you've never used one of these before, it, you can just bring up for Windows. You can just bring up the um, the, the start menu and and like type in command, for example to find a, the, the command prompt application. Since I use this a lot, I usually right click on that and pin it to my um, taskbar, so I have it down here, all right? So that's why I usually have that in here for the videos that I make, I have a, a command prompt here. So, um, so a command line interface just allows you to type in commands in order to run programs or do things, right? So uh, I, I suggest you bring this up so you can test that, uh, in this case, we installed Git, so test that Git is installed correctly. So if you use the where command on uh, Windows, this will search and see if Git is on your path, right? Because the installer um, puts the 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 um, the correct location to the Git command on your path, so it adds this C colon program files Git command. So you shouldn't have to change the path by hand. So if, if you've ever done anything with environment variables, um, you can set those if you have to uh, by hand. So, so search for your environment variables. It's under system properties and windows um, under this environment variables. So in particular, the git command um, will modify this for you. It'll add, so the git installer will add uh, the, the correct path to the git command for you, which basically means that if it does that, then if you run it from from window, it allows you to access the git command and to run the git command. So what I showed in the notes was actually running the git command to confirm that it can run. In this case, we're asking it to tell us what version it is that we just installed. So, so we, we correctly got version two. Or, well, if you do it, if you're doing it now this semester, you should get something like the same version, 2.3.0. All right, so that was all there is to Git. So Git is really a, a tool. It's something that, uh, I mean, in this class, you, you should all be kind of more upper level, kind of graduate, uh, sorry, um, undergraduate students. Um, I mean, I hope that maybe you've run across Git before. Git, Git is a tool used to manage software projects. It's more geared towards um, having collaborators, having multiple people work on a software project together in order to share files and keep track of the versions of files. We're not really using it for software development in this class. I'm mostly using it as a, a way to, to push files to you. So basically, my the, the Bitbucket Git repository is just a collection of all these files. And, and I use Git, you use Git to do a clone, which is basically to download all these files that you need for the assignments. Um, and if I make any changes or, or fixes or add stuff, you have to do that a Git um, uh, a git pull in order to pull down new changes um, after you do the initial clone. So. But anyway, so that's that's all we're using git for is basically for me to be able to to push files to you so you can get all these files you need for the class. The, the, the next tool you need is VirtualBox, right? So again, you should um, click on that, you know, and download, you know, if you're Windows, you want to download the Windows host. If you're Mac OS, you want to do download the OS X host there. Um, VirtualBox is a virtualization tool, like I say. Um, so and again, what we get downloaded is the standard installer. So if you double click on it, 
uh, you'll get a standard Windows installer. Um, if you do it for a Mac OS, you'll get a standard Mac OS package installer for VirtualBox. Uh, I think I already mentioned, but yeah, if you're a Mac OS, you, you probably should have Git already installed, so you won't have to install Git. You'll, you can start with steps two and um, install VirtualBox. Here, you shouldn't have to change any of the um, settings. You can accept all the defaults. Um, you will get this warning, but that's you know expected. Um, and just say yes, and that'll install it. Um, so this one, can't remember, it might take a little bit of time here. VirtualBox is not really meant to be used um, from the command line. So it's not really a command line tool, it's, it's got, got kind of a GUI-based interface. So once it runs, um, it'll, or so once it installs, it'll actually, um, I think, automatically kind of run the, the, the GUI here. Uh, but you can check if it installed correctly from the uh, command line um, using this here, which I'll show you uh yeah it, so it installs relatively quickly so oh yeah if you leave that checked uh, it'll start it started up i could uncheck that but I, i'll show you the the gui so once it's installed um this is what the the gui interface to virtual box looks like so you have this here uh, you shouldn't uh, I, i'll talk about this later but you're not really going to be using this gui tool we're going to be using vagrant to create and manage your virtual dev box machine here so but, but yeah once we create your your dev box you'll see it as a virtual machine over here but you can create your own machines by hand from this tool but like i said for this class you won't be using that tool so much so um so since this vagrant or sorry since virtual box is not really meant to be used from the command line it doesn't actually put the path uh, to where the tool is onto onto your path, it doesn't add it to your environment variable. So, so you have to if you want to check from the command line whether it was installed correctly or not, you have to run. You have to specify the full path name to the file. So you can just copy and paste this, for example. Um, oh, another thing. Um, so, uh, well, um, won't make a difference here. But um, if you run an installer that updates your path, right? Um, so if VirtualBox had been updating my path, uh, I, I had opened up this terminal before I ran the installer, so I wouldn't have gotten that update to the to the path. So it's always a good idea if, if you're installing stuff to, to start a new terminal after the installer finishes in case it is updating environment variables so that your terminal um, gets those environment variables um, updates. So. Um, so yeah, I just copy and paste that. So again, we're, we're just running the VBox Manage, which is the VirtualBox tool from the command line. And again, we're going to ask it, you know, dash dash version. We're going to ask it to just report the version. Um, um, and if it finds it, um, you know, so again, if you, if you try to do that um, and you get an error message, so if I, you know, if, if you give the correct name, but if you try to run that or get, um, So I should have mentioned, um, so if you do a where on git, and if instead, um, so, so got is not the correct name, there's no tool, no program called got. So if I ask where, if you do where on the correct name, where git, and you get a message that it couldn't find it, you either didn't get it installed correctly, um, or somehow your path uh, environment variable didn't get set up or something like that. So. So yeah, you should be able to find these tools using like the where command, um, and you should be able to run the tools, or at least you should be able to run Git and Vagrant. You, you, you can't run VirtualBox because it's not meant to be run from the command line, but you can run Git since it's put onto your path and ask for the version, and, and Vagrant as well once we install Vagrant here. So. Um, all right, any questions? So again, um, all that, all this stuff is also in the, those getting started videos. If I'm going past stuff real quickly, you can, you can go back and watch the videos here, but um, afterwards to do them in, in a slower. So. Um, so we finished the first two steps, actually. We, we installed Git, we installed VirtualBox. So the last thing is to install this Vagrant tool. It's another type of virtualization tool. So again, if you go to here, you want to you know download Windows or, or the Mac version, whichever operating whichever one your operating system is. Um, I think I've already got Vagrant installed, so, um, so this installer might 
try and detect whether it's installed or not already and tell you that it's already installed. But again, um, if you're running the, the Vagrant installer, um, You, you can just accept all the, the defaults um, and um, uh, let it install. You don't, have to ch you don't have to change any settings for the Vagrant, like we, um, nor do you have to change any settings for the virtual box. So the only setting that's important to check is that one in Git. So make certain that your carriage return, your, your line endings um, are, are not changed when you check out um, files from the repository here. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, for me, I think it's taking some time because I've actually already got installed here. I'm just going to cancel that. Um, and let me check here whether it's installed or not. So, um, so yeah, again, you know, um, if it installs correctly, if you open up a terminal, you can use where, and you should be able to, it should find it. So in this case, Vagrant is installed on the path C colon HashiCorp Vagrant bin, right? And if you run Vagrant, you can ask Vagrant to run and just tell you what version it is. Um, so as of the, this video, it's version 2.2.14. Um, all right, so yeah, after Vagrant installs, it'll tell you that it needs to reboot the system and you should go ahead and reboot your system um, at that point so, so that the configuration can finish. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not showing the reboot. One thing I, rec I actually recommend you do two things. So before the, the reboot, you should check if you're on a Windows system. This doesn't apply to Mac OS, nor does the, uh, the, the checking if virtualization is in hard, hardware virtualization is enabled, doesn't uh, apply for Mac hardware either. So both of these are, are PC or Windows steps. Um, so, um, this Hyper-V technology or whatever can interfere with uh, the Vagrant. Um, so, um, so here, um, you should make certain that the Hyper-V is disabled. You might not see this on all Windows operating systems. Um, so like I think Windows Home versions don't, use the Hyper-V or sometimes, so, so you might not have this, but you should check uh, that it's disabled. Check if you haven't, check this day disabled. So I have a link there on the instructions. So you need to go to, to the Windows features. I think the, again, the quickest way for me is um, just to, to search for like Windows features. So, so you, wanna be, you wanna find the control panel for turning Windows features on and off for this. Uh, and then, yeah, then you just have to find Hyper-V um, and it's the Hyper-V platform. And then that one, if, if you've got that enabled, if you've got the Hyper-V hypervisor enabled, you want to click that to unenable it and hit OK, right? That, that, that'll turn off the, this Hyper-V hypervisor, right? There was that. Um, and then, you know, so you might want to do that before you reboot. And then when you do reboot, you, you might want to go in and check. So nowadays, most computers, uh, they often have this turned on uh, already for you, um, kind of as the default, but, but you need to enter your BIOS when you reboot, if you've never done that before. So usually you do, do that by hitting like the F2 key. Sometimes it might be like F11 or F12, right? And then once you get into your BIOS, uh, you have to find the setting. So it's usually um, under processor or CPU settings in your BIOS. Uh, if you have an Intel CPU, uh, look for something like VT-X. That's the uh, turning, that, that's, and then you want to enable that or turn it on. That's the hardware virtualization for uh, Intel. AMD calls it AMD-V. So again, that's the same kind of thing, but for the AMD um, processors, um, that, make sure that's enabled for um, hardware virtualization. So. Um, All right, so that, I mean, we basically have completed the, the first three steps of, as I've outlined there. Um, so, so those were just getting the three tools installed that you need. Uh, I don't remember if I checked, but I did show you yeah, checking. Um, so we've got both Git and that's Vagrant. So by the way, this is Git space 
and then two dashes dash dash version and that's vagrant space dash dash version to, to try those out so you need to be able to have both those tools installed and, and, and virtual box as well before you go on to step four um, and then step four um, is where we're going to actually use Git. And then step five is where we're going to use Vagrant and VirtualBox. Okay, so, so step four is cloning the, the class Git repository. So again, you know, Git is a tool that you really should have come across and, and kind of have learned. And if not, it's good, you know, that you uh, at least see some of the basics of this. So all you're going to be using Git for in this class is really as, as a way of downloading the files that you need for assignments uh, and things, right? So, so to, to, to do the initial download of a Git repository, that's called cloning the repository. So I recommend that you do this. So I, I usually, in my home directory, so I'm currently, from, from the command line, I'm currently in C colon user Vagrant. My, my username on the system is Vagrant. So it'll be different for you, depending on, you know, so like if I had set up, created a user called Derek, it would be users Derek would be my subdirectory. And again, you know, this is just a view into the file system. So if you open up a file browser, and go to C colon users, um, and then your username. You should, be, you should be able to find your home directory, um, and you should have the same file. So this is a, a directory listing of my vagrant folder or my fake vagrant directory um, from the command line, um, and um, some of these files might be hidden, but, but I should be able to have basically most all the same files. Uh, a little hard to see on my little thing here, but yeah, you know, so, so these are all the folders basically all, all folders here. So notice some files are hidden, like this mtuser.dat uh, for my directory listing. Right? So I, what I recommended there was um, to create a subdirectory that you use to hold all your repositories, uh, your Git repositories. So you could do that again from like the, a file browser. So, so you could do like right click, or is it file new, you can also do, can't remember, but, but uh, you can right click on here and do new folder. Oops, <laughs> misspelled that. Um, oh yeah, I already had a re repose directory. I want to delete that here. Um, let's try that again. So um, new folder, repose. So again, notice, um, you know, so now I will see that repose directory and I could change into it, right? Or you could, you, could, you know, You could also create that from the command line. I show in the read in the instructions using a command line, make directory, do the same thing. So if I make it from the command line, it, this will also create a folder called repo. So now again, you see the, there's a repos um, and, and yeah, you'll see it in the file browser here, right? Um, and I can change into that repository directory. So the next step on step four is to change into, re, into the directory. So now my current directory, so CD, you can use both to find out what your current directory is and also to change to, to change your current directory. Okay. So I changed into the repos, so now I'm in repos. And since it's a new directory, there's really nothing in there. There's dot means the parent directory, and dot dot means the current directory, and there's nothing else. Right? So if, if you look at that from your file browser, uh, users, vagrant, repos, you know, it's, it's basically empty and the folder is empty there. Um, so change into it, and then here's where we use git for the first real, in a real way for the first time. So we're going to use the clone command to actually get a copy, to download all the files for the class that you need for the assignments, basically. So, so you can just copy and paste that, so control C, copy, control V, paste, I think it's control V, isn't it? Oh, I'm, I, I probably messed up my, um, I messed up my, um, uh, I'm running this in a virtual machine, actually, a virtual machine. Um, I'll just type it. So let me try one more time. Let's try copy paste. So copy, control C, let me see, right click, copy, yeah.
but uh, but yeah, if you're running this from um, if you're running this as a regular operating system, not a virtual, you should be able to copy paste. Um, anyway, so uh, you can tap it in by hand if you relatively good typing. So do get space clone space and then the URL basically to the repository. So that's how you use this git command. All right. So what you should see if you type that in or copy paste it correctly is that it tells you that it's cloning. You'll see it receiving, basically downloading the files. Okay, so it's really downloading. Uh, if I go back to my repository here, you'll see that the main thing of a repository, of a Git repository, is it's a collection of files plus also information about all the versions of the files that were committed to the repository. So all these files are in this repository, these subdirectories um, and sub subdirectories, and then files down here in, in these directories, right? So when we were doing the clone, it's actually copying whatever the current set of files are that's in the repository. It shouldn't take too long, so it's done here. So you notice after you do that, using like a directory command here, um, or again, using your file browser, there's now a, a new directory created after the clone called CSCI 430 OS SIP. So that's my uh, repository for this class here. And if you go in there, you'll see it has the same structure. Um, so, you know, we've got the assignment folder, the config folder, so on. Some files, readme file, things like that. So, um, those are the, the same as, as what was shown on the web browser for this Git repository. All right. All right. So, we, we just, uh, once you've done that, you know, we, we've, you know, again, uh, up to this point, Things should go relatively smoothly, I hope, for everybody. This is just uh, installing three tools and then using one of those tools, Git, in order to clone um, the, the files, the class repository, okay, right? So after this, um, then we're gonna use the Vagrant tool to actually set up and provision your, your development box, all right? Um, so this, this step can, fail sometimes so, so you might you may or may not have problems. hopefully you won't have problems but uh, sometimes so it does have to install a bunch of stuff when it initially sets up your virtual development box here All right um, so and, and I'm not going to be able to show this to you here because again I'm running in a virtual so I'd be trying to install um, a virtual machine inside of a virtual machine that doesn't work very well. So basically the first time, what, what you need to do though, before I change away is um, if you're in your repos directory, you first need to change your current directory. Th this command does have to be done from the command line, the vagrant up. So you first have to change into the repository directory called CSCI 430-OS-SIMS. Make certain that that's your current directory, your working directory, and then you want to do that vagrant up. The first time you do this, it will take a long time. It'll basically ins uh, download a virtual machine for you, uh, and then it'll do what's known as provisioning. It'll basically install a bunch of packages. So what, what is installed um, are um, uh, the compiler tools, so C++ compiler tools, uh, the make build system, um, uh, code, uh, um, formatting tools, all the things that we use for the projects for this, the assignments for this class. Uh, it also installs and sets up some editors. So it, it sets up a uh, uh, um, Visual Studio Code Editor, which is the one that I recommend that you use. Although, you know, if you're familiar with Atom or Sublime or VI, you can, you can certainly use other editors. But all of my videos, I think I use Visual Studio Code as examples of the editor or environment or stuff. So. So anyway, the first time you do that, I mean, it will take some time to do to to to, to finish. Uh, one thing I ask people to do when you do this and hit return, you'll get a bunch of messages about the installation. Um, if you see errors or you think you're having problems, uh, you should you know copy and paste that and email it to me. So from the terminal, just select um, everything that that comes after the vagrant up to when it finishes. 
and do a, you know, do a, do a copy and then paste that into like an email message and send it to me. So, um, all right. And, and uh, if any of you guys were here before I started, uh, that's what I was kind of um, telling the, the student who sounds like they maybe had some problems getting this set up here. So you can always, if, if you do have some problems inst installing, you can always do a vagrant destroy, which will completely throw away. You don't want to do this if you've got a working dev box. If you're having problems, you can do a destroy, which will clean everything up, and then try the provisioning or the installation again by then doing bigger or not. All right. Um, so yeah, like I said, I, I can't really show that here. Not, not to mention it would take, um, you know, depending on your download speed. So it first has to download a, a, a virtual box, which might take a while. Um, and then it has to install all the stuff, which also um, could take a while. So, um, so after it's done the initial time, um, you want to then do, it should halt for you. So you'll see like a window pop up while it's installing stuff. Uh, and don't do anything in that window while it's installing stuff. Uh, but once it's done, um, you'll stop getting output from the, from the first vagrant up. Um, and that window should go away because it should halt itself um, automatically, right? If, if that window doesn't go away where it was installing things, you can always do a vagrant halt to shut down the machine. So I'm, I'm doing this, I'm going to shut down my Windows virtual machine that I was um, showing you stuff up to at this point. Um, so anyway, after you get done with your first vagrant up, um, the, the window should go away and hopefully and, and hopefully your install will, will work cleanly and correctly. And then, so I'm gonna change, here I'm gonna show you then doing the vagrant up uh, here. So the, then you need to do a vagrant up a second time to actually run your virtual machine, right? Um, so after you get a clean install, if you, if you, again, if you change into your repository directory, so here I'm, I'm, I'm on a different system, I'm on, I'm on a Linux system, um, but um, um, I'm into my repository. I've already installed my virtual box, dev box here. And now I'm gonna show you what, what it looks like to do a vagrant up. So if things are good, when you do a vagrant up a second time, you should see a window pop up again. Um, although it will take a little bit of time. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the messages you'll see here. Um, So, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, um, I'm um, this is, I actually, I guess I've never done a Vagrant up on this repository before, so it's actually importing the base box, um, um, and I was gonna try and bring it up, um, but um, yeah, let me try that again, I gotta go to a different place, so I've actually got this, this is, this is where I wanted to do it. I've got it in a different subdirectory called boxes instead of repos, but same thing, so if I go to that, I think this is where I actually had my, my um, CSCI 430 box provision. So I'll try that again. Here's what you'll get when it's uh, installed correctly and uh, it's trying to bring it up. So again, it'll take a while. It'll come down here. You should see a message about it booting the virtual machine. You, you should see a separate window pop up that'll look something like that with the virtual box message and then you'll get some stuff from the boot process. But then eventually uh, you should get a, a desktop inside of this window here. Um, so if it comes up but you get just what looks like a, a terminal with a prompt for a login, then, then you might not have gotten everything installed correctly. But if instead, what I'll show you is what you should see if you had a clean install. So, uh, you know, it'll boot up. You'll see a bunch of boot up messages. You might get some warnings here um, like this. So warning remote connection disconnect. So, you know, it... it it periodically tries to see if the boot is done or not. Um, and if, if the boot is a bit long, uh, it might try once or twice before it actually finishes that, right? 
Um, you should hopefully see that the, the guest additions um, that when it checks for the guest guest additions, hopefully you won't see any warnings if they're installed correctly. You might see a warning. If you see an error, you might have a problem with your guest additions. If you see a warning, it might be okay. Hopefully you won't see any warning. And the other thing is, is hopefully I mean, you should see a, a mount message like this. So it should be trying to mount your local directory, um, which will be, if you're a Windows person, will be like C colon something repos. And it should be trying to mount that to the virtual um, dev box directory, which will be this, right? But then, yeah, this, you should get your desktop like this. It should automatically log in. You'll get a desktop environment running as a virtual machine inside of your Windows um, environment, okay? So that's kind of, uh, you want to try and get to this point this week, basically. You need to get your, your virtual um, dev box set up and running, okay? So, and, and I'll talk about, like, maybe Wednesday or, or later, um, you have a little bit of time before the first assignment is due, but um, I'll talk about, you know, how you use, like, so, so like I said, I, I installed um, some editors or, or programming environments for you, like Visual Studio Code. I recommend you use Visual Studio Code unless you already are, um, um, you know, use like Atom or VI or something like that. Um, but, you know, we've also got all the tools installed for the, 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 the compiler tools. So, um, you know, you can open up a terminal here, which I'll open up. This is, this is a Linux terminal now instead of a, a, instead of a Windows command terminal. But um, instead of where, there's the which command. So it um, does kind of the same thing. So for example, you know, we've got C++ installed um, that you need for the assignments for this class. Um, you've got make installed that you need to, to build your um, um, uh, projects and build the code. Um, you've got the, not beautify, you've got the um, uh, other tools um, for doing things like uh, formatting source code and things like that, right? Um, so the basic things you'll have links to are, you know, some editors, um, the uh, command line terminal, you got a basic file browser. So if you need to browse through your system, like, like the file browser I've shown for Windows, you can bring this up. So here you'll find, you should find that you have a repos directory, which already has the, the CSCI 430 repository, and then that has all the files, basically. So this is where you're going to actually be working on the files for the assignments. So you won't have the solutions, but the, you'll have assignment one, two, three, four, five um, on here. So. Um, among other things. So. Um, and, and yeah, there's a browser too, if you need it, a link to a browser. Although you probably don't really need to run the browser inside of your virtual machine. You can use your browser on your host machine instead. It would probably normally be better. But. All right, um, yeah, so that was all the things that I wanted to, to kind of talk about. Like I said, next time we'll go into, next time I'll be assuming you've gotten to this point and have got your dev box up and talking more about how you do the assignments and stuff. Uh, although all that information is also in those videos if you want to start working on that. Um, you know, so all that stuff that I did today is in the first getting started videos. Um, So I go back again to the class playlist. There's a couple of U00 videos. Um, so everything basically I just did today in our help session is was the, the, the same stuff in the U00-1 getting started on Windows, right? So that, that, that kind of covered all that stuff. Uh, again, if you're a Mac person, though, you can instead watch this. So I show some of the specific stuff for the Mac OS. So. 
Okay, yeah, so uh, questions? Um, I'll, I'll stick around for a bit. I'm usually gonna run these from like three to four, or well, three to 3.55 probably. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, at this point, you can ask questions, you can request, you know, if, if you want to try and like, like um, um, talk privately about some things for office hours, you can chat privately or, or I can get you set up with a, a, a breakout room or whatever, so. Oops. Okay, no questions. I'm gonna gonna stop the recording here. So, like I said, you know, these recordings will appear for this semester up here in our playlist, kind of after the 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 uh, lecture videos here, but like starting basically about here. Um, oh, I'm sorry, starting about. Um, Uh, here after the U05 one, so Q&A sessions for um, spring semester. So. All right, let me stop the uh, recording.